Hi, this is Maddie from Social Soda, and if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm preparing for a hike around Hampstead. One of the best and worst things about London is that it is so large. Something I really struggled with when I first arrived was navigating a day out. I could find a lot of things to do, but they all seemed really far from each other, and it felt as though I spent a lot of the time on the tube, travelling between things. Today I'm taking on a walk I found in this great book called London's Hidden Walks by Stephen Miller, which I love because it brings you to areas of London which are great to visit, but aren't crowded or touristy. It only gives you walks you can do in one go, but you don't have to take a bus or tube between things. I used to go to Hampstead Heath a lot when I started in London, as it's such a green, pretty space, and this walk brought back a lot of nice memories. Although it isn't a hard walk, it does take about four hours, and I put on some shoes I knew I won't mind getting a bit muddy, as this walk does go through some Heathland. I started off at Hampstead Tube Station, turning right up Oriel Place, then crossed over to Church Row. According to my book, many artistic individuals lived here, including the poet Lord Alfred Douglas and H.G. Wells. Halfway down this road, I found this beautiful church of St. John at Hampstead, built in 1745. Although I didn't go inside, I had a look around the churchyard and thought it was very beautiful. I continued down Holly Walk, noticing the Catholic Church of St. Mary, apparently used by French émigrés when it was first built in 1816. At the top, I reached the home where Robert Louis Stevenson stayed a number of times during the 1870s. He's known for his books such as Treasure Island and The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And also, I had a look at Fenton House. I didn't go inside, but it's a nice national trust, apparently. Continuing, I walked to have a look at one of my favourite places, the Pergola and Hill Garden, passing Whitestone Pond on the way. To be honest, I thought it looked a little bit run down, but it was pretty all frozen over in the winter. I did reach the pergola, and usually you can get in, but because of recent frosts, it was shut off for safety reasons. I think this is a shame, because I had been excited about filming it. It's very beautiful inside, with lots of high arches and vines growing, and the best bit about it is that you can walk to the top and look out at the heathland. One of my favourite ideas is sometime during the summer I'm going to take my guitar up there and just play. No one really goes inside, so it feels quite secret and magical. I did still manage to get some shots from the outside though. I continued on past the old Bull and Brush pub, which can apparently trace its roots back to the 17th century, and then I saw this house which I thought was really pretty, with lots of old vines covering it. At this point, I made a slight detour. Uh, hey, so I did get a tiny bit lost, uh, just a little bit. Um, so when you get to the end of North End Street, if you're doing this walk, don't just go straight into the Heathland like I did, uh, because you will end up wandering around the Heathland for about 15 minutes. Uh, instead, just bear left on a gravel path on North End Street, um, and it will take you down past a row of houses, which I found, which I found. So I'm currently back on track. But yeah, just a, just a heads up to anyone doing this walk. I passed Kenwood House, which I'd recommend going inside as it has a lovely cafe and art gallery. However, I then ran into a problem. Uh, so it's pretty muddy here. Um, so if you're taking this walk, I would recommend taking either some hiking boots or if you're like me, some very old and ancient trainers that you don't mind getting absolutely wrecked. <laughs> I won't lie, this section was pretty grim to walk through. So I've gone a little bit further down the path than I need to, but I decided that I needed a break because I got a bit tired. And so I'm just sat here resting my legs after walking for about an hour and a half, I think about an hour and a half. And I'm just sat opposite a lovely pond and it's all covered with ice because it's a bit chilly today. And it is just beautiful. And I don't know if the phone camera is picking this up, but there's lots of birds chirping in the air and it's just gorgeous. I've been thinking about why I decided to choose Hampstead Heath as a place to make a walking video when I could have chosen somewhere, say, like Bloomsbury or around uh, Trafalgar Square. I think it's because for me Hampstead Heath was one of the first places that I really started to love. And more than that, I think Hampstead Heath is an amazing indication of the variety that you can get in London. I think 
one of the most amazing things about London is the fact that it is pockets of different places and each of those different places has got a different personality and a different feel to it. And so you can go somewhere like Trafalgar Square, which I would recommend because it's amazing. But you can also go somewhere like Hampstead Heath, which is just beautiful. Continuing, I saw this pretty cool looking Victorian watermill and also stopped off to have a look at Keats's house. I really want to go inside and it's open to visitors throughout the week. I then stopped off at Berg House. I'd really recommend going inside if you can. It's free, is a museum and an art gallery and also has a really lovely little cafe. I had a really nice time wandering around for a while, looking at all the art. Finally, I came to Flask Street. As well as having a really great pub, it's got a lovely collection of shops, including this florists and this really cool antique shop, which I didn't get to go inside, but had a look at all of the books. I was pretty tired of walking by this point, so I was glad when I came out and found the Hampstead Tube Station. Hey, I'm back home now. Overall, I think I'm going to give that walk a solid 8 out of 10. I saw some very beautiful houses with a lot of history and some really lovely nature. However, my only issues were, firstly, it was quite muddy in sections. So my old trainers, uh, although I didn't care about this because they're uh, ancient and horrible, did get even more wrecked than they already are. And also there is actually surprisingly not many places to sit down. Um, so I kept on thinking that since we were passing through, through the heath, I'd find you know, lots of open plains to sit down, but we only, the walkway really took us through woodland, which I thought was a shame because I think it'd be really nice to go through more of the heathland. Uh, but yeah, those were my own two issues. I really hope that this video has inspired you either to get the book or maybe do the walk or at least just go to houses because the heathland is lovely to walk around. There's some lovely swimming ponds that you can go to or they've got some really lovely shops. See you soon.